Welcome to this five-minute horse lessons production, the Round Corral. In the Round Corral, we're going to talk about three different ways to work your horse in the Round Corral. The first will be using your short line, either a 12 or 15-foot line, and then we're going to go ahead and use the long line. And I would urge something like a 30-foot line so that you can stand in the middle of your Round Corral and allow your horse to be on the rail. And then finally, you're going to go ahead and work your horse without a rope or at liberty. And we'll show you all the different aspects of things that you need to do to work up to that. I'll say first off that I am not a fan of the round corral. I think that the round corral allows the handler or the trainer and the horse too much miscommunication. The point of handling a horse is that you're controlling your horse's bend, and when you don't have a rope and when you have poor body language, you are not controlling the horse's bend. However, Working a horse without a rope is very important, especially when you want to do some ground driving, or even when you want to catch your horse. So the skills that you can learn in the round corral, especially offline, are invaluable to any horseman. Many of the segments that you're going to learn in this particular DVD or in these five-minute segments are going to be very similar to the Essential Groundwork DVD and also the Lunge DVD. So if you've already checked those out, you'll be at a slight advantage here. Let's start with part one, which will be work on the short line. As you start your lunge work or your work in the lunge corral, you want to make sure that you and your horse are familiar with the essential ground skills. So you can look at those segments or the DVD, and uh, we're just going to briefly go over those before we start moving the horse around. So I want to make sure that I have a general knowledge of my rope that I can loop it rather than coil it up. And for my horse, I want to make sure that she can back off of pressure. Remember that as you're asking for that backup, her head should be straight, so she can back up. If she starts to twist her head off to the side, it's your job to straighten that head and then ask for your backup. Good girl. I'm going to ask her to disengage her hindquarter and get my rope ready. Loop that up. I'm going to tip her nose towards me. And then ask for that hind quarter to step through, step through, step through. Good girl. Very nice. I'm going to go ahead and organize my rope each and every time. I can either hang this uh, on either elbow. Now I'm going to ask to push that fore quarter through. So I'm going to push the head and neck over. There's my step. There's my step. Press it over. Press it over. The whole time I'm. Practicing controlling Katie's bend. Good girl, Katie. And uh, once you can do the basic or the essential ground skills, you're ready to start moving your horse in the lunge corral. Remember that when we're working the horse in the lunge corral, it's important that you learn to steer the horse and bend the horse properly. So first thing I'm going to do here is just walk a simple circle, and I'm just going to ask her to. Move away from me, good girl. And uh, I'm going to swing my rope, good girl. And I'm going to ask her to walk a circle around me, just very calmly and gently. Things to remember from essential ground skills and even the lunge DVD is that my belly button is directly forward of Katie as she's moving. So there's two places for your belly to be. One. Directly forward of where her shoulders are. Second, directly into her belly, like so, which means that I'm walking sideways. But I'm going to walk forward because it's easier for me to do this. So you must remember that your body position is very important. The other thing to remember is that we always want the horse to bend on the arc of the circle that we're making. And in this case, we want her to bend to the arc of the round corral. As I mentioned in the intro, and as you'll see in the ending segment, or here in the ending segment, people often are not controlling the bend of their horse when they're in the round corral. So the round, round corral is taking over the steering of the horse rather than the handler. Now I'm going to ask for a little change of direction, and we'll get to these a little bit in the uh, in the next segments. But these are skills again, basic skills, groundwork skills that you should have. As far as where your horse should be, what you're thinking about for your body position, for your horse's bend. 
Good girl, Katie. And I'm getting slightly ahead of her there. And then lastly, I'm going to just take some pressure off, back up, let her come towards me. I'm going to control my rope as I do that. And if you have these basic skills organized, you're ready to start working your horse. Good girl, Katie. Uh, with some more advanced lunging. And we are going to start with the short rope, and then we'll go to the long rope, and then finally we'll work her off, uh, offline. Another short segment about rope control and body position. As you're working in, in the round corral, you want to make sure that you're controlling your rope. We'll start with the short line, and make sure that you can loop your rope and coil your rope. And you can look in the extras for uh, some information, more information about that. And uh, these topics are so important that I'm just going to spend a few minutes here talking about, again, the control of your rope. First things first, I'm using the end of my rope rather than using a dressage whip or anything else. And I'm just going to work Katie on a small circle that I've got worked out here. And in order to move Katie away, I'm going to pendulum towards her with my right hand and it's exactly towards her shoulder, and that's going to get her to move away from me. Good girl, Katie. I'm trying to walk with her so that I'm in her saddle area here, and when I want her to speed up, instead of moving away, I will spin it over the top like this. It's very important that you spin over the top to tag your horse on the top side rather than spinning it underneath as though you're going to smack him in the gut. So when I want her to speed up, I'm going to go ahead and just do a slight change of uh, transition here. Good girl. The important thing again is that you spin that rope properly. There's two ways to use it. One is speed up a little bit. The other is to move away. Remember your body position should be exactly forward. If I want her to slow down and walk, I send my belly button exactly down that line, which should end up right at her nose. And you see how quickly she came down and slowed down there. It would be the same if I want her to come to a halt. I change my body position, and that's what gets in the way of Katie. If I want to do a quick change of direction, I'm going to back up. I'm not really pulling her head towards me. I'm going to switch my hands. Again, come over the top and say, look, I'm directing you to move forward and now away. My body position, as I'm on this circle, is going to be directly forward of her. Think about your belly button being directly between your horse's shoulders, so it is pointing directly forward of where your horse is walking. Again, you're also able to walk sideways like this, so that your belly button is directly on your horse's belly, which directs those ribs away, and you use your rope to pull her nose in. That keeps her body position on the arc of the circles that you're using in the round corral. But this is so awkward to walk sideways like this that it's so much easier for people to walk directly forward like so. Again, my body position allows me to use my left arm to swing towards her to say stay out from me, stay away from me. Or if I want to change uh, the gate. Good girl. I swing it up and over until I get that change of gate. You can see I'm walking a little faster on my circle. If I want her to slow down, my belly button goes to her nose. If I want her to come to a halt, again, my belly button goes to her nose. If I leave it there even longer, and then ask her to come in like so. These are all the skills that you're going to need when you're going to work your horse offline in the round corral. Good girl, Katie. Again, that is the importance of controlling your rope. Good girl. And making sure that you're controlling your body position so that your horse uh, is working on the arc of the circle in the round corral. Do not just randomly chase your horse around the round corral. Now that we've covered the basics of your body position, the arc that your horse should be on when you are working your horse in the round corral, and also your rope control, now we'll talk specifically about patterns. We'll start with a circle, we'll go to the square, and then finally to the cloverleaf pattern. Again, I've got my rope organized. I'm going to step over towards her shoulder, swing my rope, tag her on the shoulder if I need to, oh so lightly. Ask her to start moving away from me. Move away. Speed up. Move away. Good girl. 
all the while trying to make sure that my body is going forward of where my horse's shoulders are. Again, you can visualize that your belly and your hips are walking exactly where your horse's shoulders are. If you want, you can walk in time with their feet. Right now I'm gonna kind of walk with my left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, good girl. Left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, good girl. And all that I'm trying to do is make sure that her body is on the arc of the circle that I am walking right now. If I get too far ahead of her, she's gonna wanna slow down. Good girl. And I can move her out a little bit, swoop that towards her. And if I get her out too far, well now I've lost control of the end of my kind of 12 or 15 foot line here. I can still sweep my arm out towards her and give her a little slap slap to say keep moving. If I want her to come in towards me, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my rope with my right hand, pull it in, shorten it a little bit, keep moving sweetie. And then each time that that inside hind leg hits, I'm gonna squeeze my left hand to say, can you come in a little bit? Can you come in a little bit? Can you come in just a little bit? Can you come in now? Can you come in now? And what that does is it gets her back in bend as well. So as horses walk, they, their heads tend to swing to the right and to the left. If you look at her front feet, it will swing to the left and to the right, left and to the right with her feet. So if I pull now, and now, and now, that is gonna help her to balance herself through that turn. These are the things that you want to work on when you're doing these simple patterns inside of the round corral. You don't want your horse to randomly move around. Good girl. Off she goes in the opposite direction. Good girl. And same thing here. I'm gonna make sure that my belly is forward. My rope is being used properly to say either move away or speed up. If I can walk in time with her feet, good for you, good for me, for being calm enough and relaxed enough to notice things like that. Get in time with them, fall out of time, get back in time with them. Walk, walk, walk. Good girl. Moving her away, moving her away. Again, as she moves away, I lose the end of my rope, so I can still control her with my arm a little bit. When I want her to come back in, I would say, with the inside hind leg, now, now, now. I'm just asking her to come in a few inches each step which allows her to be calm, organized, and in balance. Good girl, good girl. When I want her to slow down and stop, I'm just gonna put my belly directly down that line. If she turns into me, I'm gonna back up, invite her to come in, control my rope. These again are the tools and techniques that you need to use when you are no longer going to work your horse with the line in the round corral. Good girl, Katie. Next up, we'll work her on the square. Now that you've worked out the circle, we'll go ahead and go to the square. I've got four cones out here, and I'm gonna go ahead and control my rope, ask my horse to move off. Good girl. Again, directly tell her to move away, speed up a little bit, and yet move away. Let's go, sweetie. My left hand, I'm gonna keep down and low. As I'm making a square, my goal is to walk from cone to cone. And when I get to this cone, Katie has a whole half circle or a quarter circle rather that she has to finish before I can walk on. Here you go, sweetie. Good girl. So I'm gonna stop at this cone. Katie is gonna complete her quarter circle and then off she goes and now I go as well. So as I get here, she's got a whole lot of work to do. I get to do nothing, but maybe think about her footfall. So I come out and I'm going left and right and left and right and left and right and left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. The whole time I am controlling her bend as she's making this square. On the straightaway, she is allowed to bend however she wants, more or less, but on the corners, I am going to squeeze my hand as her inside hind leg hits the ground, which would be right now, right now, right now. Good girl. That is the proper time to squeeze because her 
inside foreleg is in the air now and now. And that's the time to cue your horse through a turn. It helps your horse to bend properly, turn and bend, turn and bend, turn and bend, walk forward. My body position is what's keeping her walking forward, not my rope. My rope is saying, I'm gonna help you to turn, but my body position is saying, go forward. Here we go, my rope is saying turn, turn, turn. My body position says, move away from me, move away. I'm gonna ask for a change of direction, do the same thing in the opposite direction. And we're going to talk about that change of direction in just a little while. Good girl. Again, I'm going to let her make this quarter circle. Asking her to move away from me. Move away from me. Good girl. Good girl. I'm going to go from cone to cone. Slow down my feet. Off she goes. Very nice, Katie. I'm going to slow my feet down. She makes her quarter circle. My rope is helping her to make that turn. It's helping her to bend a little bit more. Now my body position is saying, walk straight, but move away from me. Good girl, my rope is saying turn. And I'm trying to be as quiet as possible when I'm making these turns. I don't wanna yank her through the turn. I don't wanna get there and go, turn right now. I want her to be calm. I want her feet to follow the curve of her spine. And that is the key to working your horse on the ground. And when you're riding, you can only provide enough momentum that your horse can move just a few inches each step. So as she's gonna take this turn, move just two inches in, move two inches in, move two inches in, and there's my turn. Good girl. I'm gonna go ahead and slow down. Control my rope here. Good girl. Thank you, Katie. And that is your square. Next up will be the cloverleaf pattern. Now that you've worked out the circle and the square, it's time to go to the cloverleaf pattern using your short line. And in the next part, part two, we'll do these same exercises using the long line. Good girl, Katie. So I'm gonna ask her to move off. Good girl. And she's not quite sure where we're gonna go yet, so I'm gonna kinda let her find her way out to this cone out here. And now I'm gonna stop and let Katie do a full half circle. And you can tell by the graphics now that I am going to go back to the center cone. I'm walking this straight line, just like I was walking the square. I'm going to stop, let her make a quarter turn, and now I'm going to my next cone here. So my body language is saying, move away from me. Now my rope is saying, turn. The timing would be, and now, 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 good girl. My body language is saying, now you're allowed to go straight. I'm stopping. She'll find my rope. I don't necessarily really need to cue her through that turn right there. I'm going to wait and then ask her to move forward again. This is the cloverleaf pattern. Again, what I'm doing is I'm controlling this bend so that her arc, the arc of her spine is allowing her feet to follow. Good girl. I'm going to walk directly to the middle cone. Wait, there's my, or my horse's quarter turn. Ask her to speed up. Good girl, I'm gonna stop my feet. Let her make the circle, half circle. Good girl. And then I'm gonna go ahead and switch direction. So I'm gonna get ahead of her now. I'm gonna turn around and direct her off in that direction. So you, didn't, you could see that I did not need to pull very hard. We're going to talk about the change of direction in the very next segment. And again, I'm waiting. I'm turning my body so that my belly button is directly forward of her all of the time. Good girl. As I'm stopping here, you can see that I am turning. And then off I go. So if I want to visualize that, I'm saying that my belly button is directly between her shoulders. So wherever her shoulders are, my belly button is directly forward to that. Come on, sweetie. Good girl. Sweep her away from me a little bit. I'm going to stop my feet. Good girl. And again, the more calm that you get, the more that you'll be able to start getting in time with your horse's feet. I'm walking left and right and left and right, making sure my balance my, uh, my body position is staying off of her. 
my belly button, and then I'm going to walk with her feet. Move away from me, left and right, and left and right. I can even march in place and march in place as I'm waiting for her. So find the rhythm and timing of your horse using the short line, but use some patterns so that your horse gets used to being steered and listening to your body position. You don't want your horse running around uh, with her head up, inverted, head to the outside. This is not a time to run your horse into the ground and lose their energy or try to run the energy out of them. It's a time for you to communicate with your horse and make sure that they're understanding that there is a conversation on the ground before you even get in the saddle. Next up will be the change of direction. The change of direction. You thought that it was just going to get more difficult with the cloverleaf pattern, but now you have two cones and a straight line. And we talked about change of direction in essential groundwork and also in the lunging DVD or segments. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just demonstrate this again on the short line because you're going to use it on the long line and then by the end of the DVD or the end of these segments for the round corral, you'll be doing this without a rope. Come on, sweetie. Good girl. So here we go. I'm going to let Katie make this uh, half circle around me and when her tail crosses the line between me and that first camera, I'm going to back up and just by the fact that I'm getting in her way, she wants to change direction. So again, I'm going to use my rope now to say move away from me, move away from me. As she's going in front of me, I'm going to point my belly button straight forward. As Soon as it crosses my line, I'm going to back up. I'm going to switch my hands on my rope, get my free end to say, look, I really do want you to go that way, so move off of the pressure. But I am trying to stay directly on my line. Oftentimes when people want a change of direction, they start moving all over the place. The trick here is that you're communicating to your horse that this is my line and I'm directing you to move away and around me and whatever line that I have. You can see Katie is licking her lips, her head is low, she's making perfect sense of what's going on. My belly is pointing directly at that wall. I am backing straight up. I am not pulling her head in any way. I have a nice open hand. I'm going to switch. I'm going to go ahead and get my free end and ask her to move away off of that pressure. Good girl. As she's coming around, my belly is directly on her belly. And she's going to know that something is up right now because now I'm no longer moving with her. So when my belly is somewhere else and my body gets in her way, she realizes that there is some form of communication going on here. Good girl. And this time, instead of doing a change of direction, I'm going to go directly back into using my body language to say, look, we're not doing a change of direction this time. We're going to make this oval. So my body position is saying, you move away from my line. My rope is helping me. I stop. If I'm going to spin with her, then she'll know that we're going to continue doing a, an oval here. Good girl. I want to stay on my line. Move away from me, please. Move away from me. Now, instead of spinning this time with her, as if we were going to make a circle, I'm going to put my belly back over here. And I'm going to back up. And she immediately knows that we are not just making an oval. We're doing a change of direction. Good girl. I'm going to put my belly right on her nose, see how she wants to slow down and stop. That is the importance of your body position when you're working your horse. We're going to do all these same exercises on the long line in the next part. And after that, we'll move to working your horse offline in the round corral. Good girl, Katie. Part two, using the long line. So it was pretty exciting using the short line going through the circle and the square and the cloverleaf and the change of direction. And now it's time to graduate to the long line. The most important thing when you're dealing with your long line, again, is that you are looping your line properly so that it's not getting in the way and you're not being distracted by your tools when you're working your horse. This is a pretty new rope. I made it myself. It's very orange. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? And it has a bunch of little kinks and it doesn't really feel right to me. So I will take some time and just throw this out 
and then loop it up again. Each time that I do, some of these kinks are going to work their way out. And as I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep my right hand very neutral. I'm bringing my left hand to my right hand, throwing it out, and doing it again. Each time that I put a uh, loop into my hand, I'm making sure that these individual ropes are going in so that they're going to come back out one at a time. I always know where my horse is. My horse is really trapped between my thumb and my pointer finger. And it's very important that you do this again and again. And it's also very good for your horse to stand here while you've got something else to do. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side of my horse. I'm going to walk over. I'm going to switch my hands and throw this out. And then go ahead and loop this up with my opposite hand. The trick here, again, is to make sure that you're controlling the end of your rope so you can swing it forward or you can swing it back and get used to it. I can tell that this rope is much lighter than the other rope that I was using, the short line, so I have to navigate that and not be distracted by it. The other thing you want to do as you're using your long line is make sure that you're using it to your side because if you're going at your horse like this, next thing you know, it's getting stuck between your legs and now you've got to fish it out. So practice throwing it out and looping it up. The only time that I want to coil my rope is when I'm putting it away. Now that you can do that without your horse moving, you want to go ahead and ask your horse to move off. So I'm going to go to the opposite side. I'm going to go ahead and drop my rope once more, make sure that it's completely organized, and then I'm going to ask her to move off. And the point of this exercise right now, good girl, let's go. Good girl. So she's been standing for a few minutes and she's gotten a little lazy and it's a good warm day here in California. And I am going to allow her to just move however she wants to because what I want to do now is practice looping my rope. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and drop the whole thing, keep my left hand neutral, loop it up. I'm watching my horse and I want to know when I get to the end here so that I can control her as I need to. This is good desensitization for your horse as well. Again, I've got to kind of wait for that saddle area. Now I know where the free end is, so I can say either speed up or move away from me. Good girl. Again, I'm going to drop this line, making sure to control both ends of my rope. As I pick up my free end, good girl, I can say, look, I want you to speed up just a little bit. And then I'm going to control the horse end as well. The easiest way to control your horse end is with my right hand. My left hand stays nice and neutral. I can make this rope too long. If it gets to be like this, I'm going to shorten it with my uh, controlling hand rather than trying to lift my hands up like this. So practice this. Keep your left hand neutral. Loop your rope up with your right hand. Practice getting the end of your loop, the end of your rope rather. Spin it. You can make it larger. You can make it smaller, bring it together, throw it out, loop it up. You need to be able to do these things without being distracted by your tools. Again, I'm going to do just a slight change of direction, get my free end, swing it out at her, move away from me. I'm going to control the horse end of my rope. I'm going to control the free end of my rope. As she moves away, I need to drop my forward loop. I know where it is in my hand because of the way that those loops went into my hand. Here again, I'm going to relax. Things are not in control right now because I don't have control of my rope. Move away from me, please. Move away from me, please. Good girl. My belly button, again, exactly forward. I'm going to put some pressure on her nose, back up, control my rope. My right hand stays neutral. My left hand slowly pulls it out of the way as she approaches me, keeping my hand down and low. So if she wants to come in and smell my hand, it's going to stay low so that she rounds her top line in order to come in and make contact with me. The important thing here is that you're controlling your rope without being distracted by it. Because everything that we did in the last part, we're going to do in this part with a long line. After you've developed this sense of controlling your long line, let's have just a short segment about body position using your long line as well. So I'm going to once again just stand back, 
spin my rope. I'm going to slightly tag her if I need to. Good girl. As soon as she moves, my pressure stops, but then I can say, look, move away from me, move away from me. So I'm moving her away now by keeping my belly exactly in front of her. So with my long line, I can gently let it out and push her over to the rail. Good girl. And again, I need to wait for that saddle area in order to keep her moving forward. So as I'm walking, my belly right now is directly forward of her shoulders. Good girl. And the other place it can be is directly pointing into her ribs. The whole point of working your horse in the round corral is that as your horse is moving, her spine should arc exactly <laughs> as though the round corral is shaped. And you can see right now <clears throat> that she's a little bit to the outside. So what I want to do is e ever so gently just fix that nose just a little bit. So every time that that inside hind leg hits, I can say, hey, move your nose in now. Move your nose in now. Good girl. But the important thing is that my body is allowing that to happen. Because if I'm fighting with my horse and I have my belly on her nose, see how she just put her nose to the outside right there? So I'm going to put my belly in front of her, tell her to move her nose in, move her nose in. Come on, sweetie. Move it forward just a little bit. Good girl. Move your nose in. Here I'm going to put my belly right on her face. See how she just turned to the outside? And now I'm going to say, look, bring it back in, bring it back in, sweep towards the ribs to push her away from me trying to control that bend with my body language. Move away from me, please. Move away from me, making sure that she doesn't run into my left hand. Good girl. And I'm going to ask her to speed up. Ready, sweetie, trot. Good girl. As my horse, <clears throat> as my horse starts to trot, I still can just walk a nice leisurely walk or I can walk sideways like so. But it's much easier to walk forward. Here you go. Good girl. And ready? Trot. Good girl. Even at the trot, try to make sure that your horse is bending properly. So your body position needs to be either forward of your horse's shoulders or directly on her belly. When you want to slow down, put it on her nose. When you want a halt, you can do the same thing again. So you are disrupting your horse when you want to get a change of gait. Good girl. As she notices me, again, I'm going to back up. I'm going to control this rope pulling it gently back, keeping my hand down and low so if she wants to come and make contact with me, she can do so without inverting and being upset about coming into me. Good girl, Katie. Remember your body position, either directly forward of where your horse's shoulder is or you want to make sure that you're pointing directly at the belly. Now that we've got the rope and the body position, We'll start with the circle and we'll go through a change of transitions here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and control the end of my rope, ask Katie to move off. So again, I'm going to swing up and over the top, give her a little tag if she needs it. Good girl. Ask her to move away. Each time that she moves away from me, I need to make sure that I'm giving up the horse end of my line. So make sure that your hands are not getting uh, too complicated or distracted by your rope. And here again, she's ready to kind of stand still because she gets a little time between takes. And so I'm not going to be too tough with her about moving off very quickly. My body position again, as I'm walking, I'm walking forward as though my hips were mimicking her shoulders. So I'm walking directly forward of her line of travel. Good girl. I got to make sure I don't get too far ahead of her here. Otherwise, she's going to want to slow down. Good girl. As you're working your horse in the round corral, again, it's not just that she's going to go around and around and around. You want to control her bend. That's why I'm not a fan of the round corral if people are not using ropes properly. Good girl. So there, that uh, rope came back and kind of tagged me on the heel and then got messed up. So I just dropped it, re-looped it, and then figured it out again. So anytime that you kind of make a mistake and go like this, oh my gosh, 
Just drop your rope and sort it out. Then start talking to your horse again. Good girl. I'm going to ask her to trot. When the inside hind leg hits the ground, good girl. So as she's moving now, everything remains the same. This is the point of the long line. I can say speed it up, move away, loop my rope. When I feel like she's going to slow down, I try to get the end of my rope so that I can say keep moving. Good girl. <clears throat> As she's moving around, again, I'm trying to stay in that saddle area. I'm going to try to control that nose. Say, keep it bent to the inside. Keep it bent to the inside. Keep it bent to the inside. Good girl. I'm going to go ahead and ask for a, a transition again. When the outside hind leg hits, I'm going to smooch. Good girl. My body language does not change. Try to control your horse's bend at every gate. You can see how I am talking in time with her feet. Latch yourself onto the rhythm of your horse. Control your horse's bend. Watch what happens when my belly goes down this line. She immediately breaks gait. Good girl. Oh boy. So now we're at the trot. I'm going to go ahead and put my belly down my line again. See how she wants to break gait. So use your body position to control your horse, not to confuse your horse. If I take this pressure off now, ask her to come into me. Good girl. I'm controlling my rope. Oh, first lope of the day. Good girl. So when you're working your circle, again, your body position and your rope control is so very important. And once you work your circle, you can go ahead and work your square as well. Once you've worked your circle, it's time to go ahead and use the square. Now, some folks think, why would you possibly want to work on a square in the round corral? And the reason is because you want to control your horse. Again, one of the reasons I do not like the round, control, or the round corral is that people start using the round corral to steer their horse. So even though they're on a square, oops, then um, they're just using the round corral. So if I let her walk all the way to the rail, and then wait, and then I kind of make my square, she's just walking the rail. I'm not controlling her. So don't fall into this trap. What you want to do is say, Come off of that rail a little bit there, doll. Control your rope. And now I'm going to walk forward. Good girl. I'm going to control my rope. Keep moving. And I don't want the edge of the round, control, or round corral <clears throat> to control the situation for me. I'm stopping. And I'm going to let her make that square, the little uh, quarter circle, rather. And I'm going to walk, wait, turning my body. And so I've got my square again. It's very important that you're controlling your rope. Again, if you got this thing all tied around your legs. Now here she stopped. I am going to control my rope and then say, look, sweetie, keep moving. So I don't need to panic if all of a sudden things have stopped. She should have kept going, but she didn't. And I didn't really have a way of saying keep moving because my rope was out of control. So start it at the walk. Make sure that you've got control of your rope and then ask her to trot. Again, inside hind leg. Good girl. Turn, turn. Turn, turn. Come on, keep it going. Turn, turn. When the inside hind leg, turn, turn. Turn, turn. So it only takes two small squeezes for me to say turn, turn. Turn, turn. And I have nothing to say. One, two, three squeezes. Nothing to say. One, two, squeezes. I'm going to squeeze once, twice. Just enough to get her to start that quarter circle. But I am controlling the situation here. Good girl. Now from this square, I'm going to go ahead and ask for my... Uh, lope or my canter. 
Good girl. Controlling my rope. Now I'm clearly off of my square to get it started. But now I'm going to see if I can't con control her a little bit more. And what I'm doing is making a smaller and smaller square. Turn, turn. Turn, turn. Turn, turn. Now move out for me, please. Good girl. Let her go back on the rail. Come in. Now, now. And I'm cueing when the inside hind leg hits. Now, oops. If you cue, whoops, there she's cross firing. Slow down, sweetie. Good girl. So you have to be very careful when your horse is at the lope or the canter that you're not pulling so hard that they start to cross fire. When your horse is on the ground like so, you want to give a little squeeze. When the inside hind leg hits the ground, when you're riding, it's the opposite. It would be the outside hind leg. But when you're trying to pull her into a circle, you have to wait until that balancing diagonal hits the ground, which is now, 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 now. Turn, 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 turn. And I'm going to let her go back on the rail. I'm walking my circle now. And I'm going to ask for my trot. So I'm going to run my belly down that line. There it is, right there. Let her trot. I'm walking a circle again. I can go back onto my square. And this time, as she comes around, I'm going to go ahead and let my belly stay down the line. And there is my break again. Good girl. I'm going to keep my belly on her nose. As she turns in, I'm going to back up, inviting her to come in. I'm going to control my rope. Good girl. I'm going to keep my hand nice and low. So if she wants to come in and stretch into me, she's welcome to do that. You can always square your horse's feet up. Back up just a little bit. Good girl. Just a half step. That was nice. Oh, perfect. Good girl. So work your horse on a square, but feel free to go back to the circle and vary your patterns so that you're controlling your horse and not letting the round, or the round corral control your horse. Now that you've worked out the square, and more than that, varied your pattern a little bit between the square and the circle and changed your gates a bit, go ahead and use the cloverleaf pattern again in the round corral. The importance of this cloverleaf pattern is that you really have to be able to control so much in order to communicate to your horse. So again, here I'm just walking. I'm going to wait now so that she can finish really just a quarter circle right there. And I'm going to slow down, and I'm going to walk from cone to cone here. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to keep spinning my belly so it is directly mimicking where her shoulders are. Ask her to move away. I'm walking a straight line. She's doing all of the work. You can take this time as well to control your rope. Loop it. Find your free end. Push your horse out. Say, look, go forward, but stop making a circle. I'm going to walk. And this is a great pattern because it really does reinforce that inside bend. Your horse is constantly making deeper and less deep bends. So as she goes around this corner here, you're saying bend around, bend around, which is developing that outside diagonal. Right now, her right outside shoulder, she's putting her weight there and balancing it there. So she's balancing and turning on that step. Balance and turning, balance and turning. I'm going to ask for a trot now. So go ahead and trot, please. Good girl. As I make this clover leaf pattern, nothing changes for me. I might walk a little bit faster, but not as far. I'm letting her pull a little bit of rope out of my hand. Let's go. Speed it up, sweetie. So I'm ready to talk to her at any time using the free end of my rope. Now at the trot, you can get kind of ahead of her a little bit and she'll be a little bit more forgiving because she's got a little bit of momentum going. Good girl. And you can see that her circles now are a little bit bigger than at the walk. And on the turns especially, I need to speed her up just a little bit. Again, you can time your cueing. When I'm saying turn, I want her to turn now, 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 now. I'm looking at the inside hind leg. When that inside hind leg hits, that's when the inside foreleg is in the air. So it is now, now, squeeze, squeeze, left hand. 
you can't really see me cueing because it's such a light tug. I'm saying, look, move over just a little bit now. Now. And now. And now. Good girl. Let's go. Now I'm going to go ahead and ask for my transition to the lope or the canter. Good girl. See if I can't ever so gently keep her on this pattern. Good girl. Again, the difficulty is if you pull too hard, you're pulling her out of balance. Katie in particular has a re real problem with cross firing. So right now she looks so good. And now I'm going to put my belly down the rope. See if I can get my trot. And she's going and she's going and she's going. There it is. And I'm going to take my belly off of her again. Now she's at the trot. I can say, look, I want you back on this pattern. Now is my chance to get my rope ready again. So I'm looping it up, trying to keep my left hand nice and neutral. Again, I'm going to pull my belly down the line. Good girl. Ask her to come on in. There she's licking. I'm going to step away as she looks at me, control my rope very calmly, very gently. Make sure she doesn't step on it on her way in. Good girl. Ask her to back up just a half step, sweetie, just a half step to balance you up. Oh, perfect. That was fantastic. Work a pattern in the round corral so that you don't allow the round corral to control your situation. It's so much, it's so very important, especially when you're ready to move outside of the round corral, whether it's into the arena or into the real world. You must learn to control your horse, and your horse must learn to accept that you're controlling the situation. The change of direction on the long line. Oh, so exciting. This is the last segment before you can go rope free with your horse in the round corral. So now that you've worked out all the different patterns with your long line, let's talk about that change of direction at your different gates as well. So again, I'm going to ask her to move off. My body position is so very important. And first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of this garbage that's in my hand. Now when I drop that, I lost my control. So when Katie stops, I have no one to blame but myself. That is not her problem. So I'm going to ask her to move forward, move forward. I'm going to keep my belly button straight, pointing directly at this cone in front of me. I'm going to back up and I'm letting this rope slide out of my hand. As she starts to make her change of direction, I'm controlling my rope and then trying to say, can you move? Can you move? Can you move? Good girl. So there's your change of direction. You've got a lot of rope to navigate here. Keep her moving, keep her moving. Again, I'm going to keep my belly button pointed exactly forward. And I'm going to wait. I'm going to back up, letting the rope slide out of my hand. As she looks to me, I'm going to direct her head just a little bit, control my rope, spin that thing and say, look, you've got to move away from me and speed it up. Good girl. And Again, I'm controlling my rope. She's saying, what am I doing? I'm not really sure. Your body position was not so great. You weren't really doing that well. And now we're back to me saying, you got to keep moving here, doll. I'm going to ask for a trot now, and we're going to do the same thing. Good girl. So as she's going to make her circle, I'm going to let her come around to the front. I am going to stay kind of close to my line. So even if I'm walking a circle here, what I'm going to do is I get to this line, my belly goes forward, I'm going to back up, I'm moving a little bit faster, off she goes. Again, I have quite a bit of line to deal with here, and each time I want to make sure that I'm dealing with it. Now my rope's gotten all messed up here, so I want to take care of that. I'm going to stop, keep my belly here, and you can see that I'm giving her some vocal command to say, I want you to keep trotting through this thing. I'm controlling my rope. She might stop. Oh, I just wasn't quick enough there. Good girl. So again, I'm going to walk my circle until I get to my line. I'm going to stop, point my belly, wait. Control my rope. Good girl. Come around. Walk my circle. Get to my spot. Stop. Back up. Good girl. And now I'm going to ask for my canner. And we'll see what she does here. Stop. Wait. Back up. Good girl. 
Did she change? Nope, she's cross-firing. Slow her down. Hey, sweet, I don't want her cross-firing. Hey, hey. Good girl. Good girl. So we got our canner. Again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna wait and go. I'm getting in her way. Oh, there we got a little energy. And she came out of that one just fine. We got a nice lope or canner. I'm gonna wait, back up. I am not pulling on this rope. I am not making that happen. Whoops. She's trying to fix her feet. She didn't, there she got it. Good girl. And now she's starting to get a little bit of energy. I'm gonna again wait, back up, control my rope. There, good girl. Now I'm gonna say, if you wanna trot, I welcome you to trot. Is she paying enough attention to me now to hear my body language? There, she's slowing down her canner. Good girl. So it's a way that you can tell if your horse is getting too wound up is to do these changes of direction. Oh, she broke gate right there. And I didn't ask for it. Good girl. So when your horse starts to get a little wound up, do some of these changes of direction. You shouldn't work very hard. You're controlling your rope, controlling your body position, making sure that your horse understands that you are controlling this situation. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna let this rope slide out of my hand. Ah, good girl. And this time I'm not gonna ask for a change of direction. Control my rope, control my rope. I don't care that she's gonna stand on the uh, long end of that right there. Ah, that was exhausting, huh? The goal when you do your change of direction is you find your line and you stick to it, control your rope, and that is how you make effective changes of direction with your long line in preparation for going offline. Part three, the round corral without a rope. So how exciting, here we are now, Katie does not have a halter or a rope tied to her, and we're gonna go over the, some of the very same techniques that we used with the short line and the long line. So the important thing is, again, that you're controlling now your body position. You're hopefully going to keep your horse bent in the direction of travel. Again, your horse should bend as though the arc of the round corral is moving. And if your body position is all, all over the place, you're going to confuse your horse, get them to counterbend, invert, throw their head up, and you'll cause them more pain and distress. Your goal working with a horse, whether it's on the ground or when you're riding, is that you're a yoga instructor. You're trying to get your horse to bend and relax and uh, move in balance. Good girl. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep my 12-ish uh, or 15-foot line so that I have the end of my rope to control my horse. So here we go. I'm going to back up and I'm going to ask her to move forward. And kind of right away, she went off in the wrong direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my body language back up and say, look, I want you to move off in that direction. Now I'm going to sweep into her ribs and say, move away. So even though I don't have a line on her, we're still kind of making our little circle right here. And to a certain extent, when you're working a horse at liberty or without a rope, you're going to have to randomly work your body language. There I've kind of moved towards her hindquarter to say, move it back into the rail. Good girl. So I'm saying, move forward, move forward. As I'm walking with her, I'm going to walk in time with her feet. So get your timing down. This shouldn't be all that complicated that you can't walk right, left, right, left. Again, I am waiting for this saddle area here. If I get ahead of her, if I'm like, I'm not really thinking, oh my gosh, she stops, she turns, she looks at me and says, what's going on? At this case, I could say either come in. I'm inviting you to come in, Katie. Remember before I would like control my rope. Good girl. So she's learned that that could be an invite in. It also could be a change of direction. Good girl. So I'm gonna go ahead and, even though I'm not currently uh, attached to a rope with my horse, I'm gonna go ahead and get my rope ready, ask her to move off, put my belly forward. I'm gonna sweep kind of towards the hindquarter there, put my belly on her hindquarter, see if she can't make that turn. Good girl. So your body position now controls your horse. This is so important when you want to catch your horse, when you want to uh, work your horse with ground driving as well. Because oftentimes you will lose control of your horse with your reins and your body position will be the only thing that saves the two of you. So again, I'm going to work her kind of on this circle. 
Good girl. Good girl. I'm going to ask her to speed up. Good girl. Now I'm going to go back to a slightly smaller circle for myself because I don't need to be as close to her. Keep going. Again, I got to cut a weight for that saddle area. I'm going to ask for a bit of a lope. Good girl. If I can keep my belly off of her, she just might bend properly going around this round corral. Good girl. There's two places for my belly, walking directly forward of her. Or I might go all the way back so I'm pointing my belly at her tail. Good girl. Forward. When I want her to slow down, I'm going to point my belly at her nose. And as soon as she breaks gait, I'm going to take my belly forward again to say that's exactly what I wanted, sweetie. When I want her to go from that trot to the walk, point my belly at her nose, ask her to keep moving again. Good girl. If I want her to come into me, I'm going to point my belly at her nose, see how she starts to turn and say, now what's going on? And I'm going to back up, invite her to come in. So you got your changes of gait without a rope. But it's because we controlled the situation at the rope, and more importantly, we were controlling that bend so that she can relax into this communication rather than rebel from it. You don't want to see your horse throwing its head up, inverting, running around, and being slightly half-crazed. You want them to relax and understand that you're communicating with them. Changes of direction. So I'm going to, again, just back up. I'm going to use the free end of my rope to say, could you move off, sweetie? And off she goes. Good girl. Up, up, up. And again, she's going to do this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just move over here, cut her off, kind of direct her, put a little pressure on this side of her body, and then try to go for a hind quarter. So I'm going to see if I can't get her to circle around me to my left. So I want her to go that way. And again, I'm going to get over here and say, no, no, I really want you to go the other way. That's the way I want you to go. Thank you, sweetie. That's great. Take my pressure off. So I'm using my body language to say, that's where I want you to go. So again, when I'm asking for my changes of direction, she's a long way from me. I got no, nothing to go on with my rope. I'm walking a circle. I'm going to walk to my white line, which is between those two cones. When I get to this white line, I'm going to switch my body position. I'm going to back up, see how she looks at me. And I'm going to back up. And now I'm going to swing my rope and say, that's exactly what I wanted. Good girl. And now this is kind of the do or die. I'm going to kind of walk into her, see if I can change her bend. Good girl. And then off she goes in the other direction. Again, if you can get her to change her bend, then she will likely follow that. Her feet want to follow the bend of her spine. So my body language, again, is saying bend around me. When I stop my feet, maybe you want to think about what I'm doing. I start to back up, see how she looks at me right there. I back up, I can swing this end of my rope and pendulum towards her to say, look, can you bend? Can you bend right there, please? I need you to bend your ribs. Bend your ribs. And there she made it. Good girl. So she kind of stopped. Again, I'm back on my circle now. My belly is pointed forward. I'm going to ask her to trot. Good girl. It's been a long day. And again, I am walking my circle. I am trying to keep my belly off of her. Trying to keep her moving. Let her know that she can keep moving in a relaxed manner. Trying to be mindful of her bend. I don't have any control of her bend with a rope right now. I'm stopping. I'm backing up. Good girl. I'm going to ask her to trot again. Good girl. Trot, trot, trot. I'm back on my circle until I get to my change of direction line. Walk to my circle. Here's my change of direction. If I can just bring my energy up a little bit, it's likely that she'll continue to trot. I am back on my circle, keeping my belly forward. I'm going to stop, change my belly. Good girl. Here we go. Ask for this uh, lope. Good girl. At the lope, I wait a little bit longer. And will she make the change? 
So she made the change of direction, but she broke to the trot, which is okay. Again, I'm controlling my belly. Here we go. Oh my goodness, so much energy. Very nice. Oh, and then she cross-fired. I'm gonna put my belly down her nose to say, please trot and fix your feet. Good girl. Watch my belly. I'm gonna let her go ahead and lope. Here we go. Wait, go. And. And that time again, she, oh, she's just on the wrong lead right now, which is better than the crossfire. Good girl. Oh, and again, she came around, crossfired. I'm gonna slow her down, pick it back up. So now I have control of my horse's feet as well. All offline. My belly now is gonna point at her nose. I'm saying, please trot. Good girl, I'm gonna take my belly off of her. I'm gonna put it back on her to say, please walk. Good girl, I'm gonna take it off to say, continue walking. And now I'm gonna put it on her again. And when she slows down and tips her head towards me, then I will back up and ask her to come on in. Oh, almost. There it is. And then I'm gonna back up and ask her to come into me. Again, I'm gonna keep my hand low. I don't have a rope to control anymore, but I'm telling her, just as I did with the long rope and the short rope, hey, it's time to come in, relax. Good girl. Now that you've worked out your changes of gait and your changes of direction, then you can mix it up. I've got now in the round corral four cones set out on each side, which makes eight. And what I'm gonna do when I ask for my changes of direction is start to say, look, I want you to turn at the white cone here, and then I want you to turn back around over on the other cone. And in this manner, you, as the handler without a rope, will increase your timing and your horsemanship skills, instead of just getting some random change of direction, you are now gonna steer your horse with your body language and whatever tool you choose. I tend to like a rope because it's nice and easy to carry around and it just coils right up to go into your bag. So we're gonna ask her to move off. Good girl. And I'm gonna say, can you move over to the rail? Oh, she's fantastic like that. I am walking my circle just like before, just like when I had my short line, just when I had my long line. But you see how she's bent to the outside right there? Oh, it drives me crazy. That's why I don't like the round corral, okay? So I'm gonna just do a change of direction here at the walk. My belly goes forward and I'm gonna say, I want you to come right before that orange cone. Good girl, that's fantastic. And now I would like her to go between the orange cone and the white cone over there. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that because she's kind of going over there. I'm just, oh shoot, I missed it. What kind of horseman am I? How can I teach this if I can't even get my horse to go between those two cones? Good girl. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk her. And now I'm gonna ask for my trot. So again, I'm gonna think about the timing. All I got is all day to stand around and think about what's the best way to, for her to pick up her trot. It would be the inside hind leg when it hits the ground, which is right now. Right now I'm gonna cluck. And. Good girl. I'm watching my body language. Here we go. So there's my change of gait. When I get to my line, I'm gonna wait. And I'm gonna say, I want you to turn now at the white cone. Good girl. Can you keep going? Good girl. I come back. I'm gonna put my belly here. And I can feel in this hand that I've got a knot in my rope. Oh man, that just drives me crazy. So I'm not gonna do anything else with Katie until I figure this thing out. And I don't wanna look at it. I wanna figure out why it's messed up without losing control of my horse without losing control of my body language. So make sure that you're controlling your rope. Here we go, another change of direction. I'm gonna say around the first orange cone there, which would be the second cone, I'm gonna back up. Oh, she kind of broke gate. And she's gonna stop and just have a moment. Oh, that's fantastic, Katie. Ready, let's go. So I'm gonna again, use my body language. I'm gonna try to keep her from turning the other way. As long as she's got her head turned that way, she's probably gonna go that way. Good girl. And she tends to wanna go right back to the rail. I'm gonna ask for my trot. Good girl. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and wait. This time I'm gonna go around that second orange cone. Oh, I was a little bit too quick. Back she goes on the rail. 
And this time I'm going to try again with that second orange cone. So I'm going to say, wait, keep going, keep going, and now. Yes, got it. And can I get her to go through the white cone? Well, that wasn't, I was going to go through the other one, but oh, and then she went all the way over there. Good girl. Ask for the lope. I'm going to ask her to come around the white cone. Good girl. I'm not going to be too uh, conscientious about where she changes in the other direction. I'm going to ask her to lope again. Good girl. So make this a bit of a game. This time I'm going to go with the uh, second orange cone. Good girl. And she is broke down to her trot rather than cross firing. Good for her. I got to be careful about my belly right there. I got it in front of her. Starting to get a little bit of steam going right here. It's a perfect time to say, you know what, come around the white cone. Good girl. So as my horse gets wound up, ask for changes of direction. I'm going to ask Katie to come to a walk, so I'm going to point my belly right at her nose. Good girl, keep walking. I am going to ask Katie to come to a halt and now join up. So as she turns towards me, I'm going to back up. I'm taking smaller steps than she is approaching me. I'm even mimicking her steps. Good girl. So all of these things that you can do in the round corral, which are very important to control your body position, your horse's bend, but I feel as though you're at an extreme disadvantage without a rope because you cannot control your horse's bend as well. However, you do need these skills in order to effectively catch your horse and especially when you want to go to your ground driving. Good girl, Katie. Which we're going to take on in the next DVD or in the next segments. The whole point of working your horse in the round corral is that you are increasing the communication skills with your horse. So that when you're working your horse offline, she understands what it is that you're saying and can bond up with you. All the fun things that you want to do, join up, get your horse to change directions, change gates, all of these things are a part of the process of working in the round corral. Again, my disclaimer is that working in the round corral causes a lot of miscommunication because people are not able to control the bend of their horse and their, the handler's body language can often become uh, somewhat of a drawback for people who are unskilled or unknowledgeable in working with your horse, especially without a rope. Good girl, Katie. So there you have it. Lots of fun in the round corral. Um, and these skills, again, will really help you to catch your horse and when you want to go on to ground driving because you'll use your body language often when you've completely lost control of your reins or your horse has slightly panicked. Hey, sweetie. You are the best. <laughs>